Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to go ahead and do a part three to uh, the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law, and the spirit of the law is the spirit of love or love. God's motive and emotion behind the law, all of the rules, is not to punish people or to be hard on people, okay? God's emotion toward it was that he loved everyone and he wanted to protect them from each other, okay? That's his emotion, and his motive was always to provide and protect. His emotion is love, and his motive is to provide and protect, okay? Man's approach to the law, and it still is today, even though we're supposed to be filled with the Spirit of God, we still operate as if we're old covenant believers, and our motive uh, is not to get in trouble, to avoid God getting on to us or us being punished, and that is not the goal. The goal was to, uh, for the old covenant, the goal of the old covenant was to keep people from hurting one another, okay, until a better covenant could come into play where people could be filled with the Spirit of God and come with the right emotion and motivation toward how they treated each other, which was God's emotion and motive from the beginning. Did that make sense? The old covenant, God's emotion and motive behind that covenant was always love and to provide and protect people. Men's cold-hearted hearts, their motive was not to get in trouble, and their emotion was toward themselves only, and their motive was to stay out of trouble. Okay, but God worked within cold-hearted people until he could bring Christ and, and give us the spirit of the law in our hearts and in our minds and give us the new and better promise, the new and better covenant, which means that now we've come into alignment with how God has always been, his emotion and motive behind the old covenant is exactly the same emotion and motive under the new covenant, which is love and to provide and to protect. And now he's hoping that his people will have the same emotion and motive as he does, which is love, the spirit of love, okay, the law of love, as well as the right motive not to stay out of trouble with him, not to get stoned by the community, or what we teach now is to go to hell and be burned for eternal conscious torment in a lake of fire. No, what God wants is for our motive of walking in the spirit of love, toward other people has nothing to do with trying to stay out of trouble. Our motive should be now to provide and protect people just like God wanted to, okay? So now, now that I've talked about that today, I'm going to throw you a, a little humdinger here, something you can think about, and maybe tomorrow I can talk about it. Did you know that uh, I have people ask me, and I know there's Torah people and different ones, that still try to fulfill and keep the old covenant laws to some extent of what they feel is reasonable and can be filled. They don't do the slaughtering of animals, although some religions do, okay? And different things like uh, they say circumcision is not mandatory, but they still do it sometimes, different things like that. And it's okay if you pick up sticks on uh, the Sabbath because even though it's something that can easily be done, they don't see the necessity in that. But here's what I'm saying. You've got people that are trying to merge two different covenants, and they're opposed to one another. The Scripture clearly says that. The old covenant brought death, but the new covenant brings life, and you can't blend the two of them, okay? But there are people that try to live by both. But uh, let me say this. There was, and this is what very few understand or realize that Scripture does say, and I think this is one of the reasons we try to keep both of them alive. Scripture t uh, sh certainly does reveal to us that the Old Covenant and the New Covenant overlapped and both were in an effect at, at one point. And let me read you that one little verse today, and that's all I'm going to do. But Because uh, i got some other stuff I want to share with you. But here it is. It's... Uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. Thus, when it speaks of a new covenant, it puts the first one 
and some scriptures say it puts the old one out of date and makes it obsolete. And here's the key. Ready to expire. Something that is out of date and growing old and is about to disappear. Okay, so here's the key. Did you know the old covenant was still practiced and going up until the destruction of the temple in 70 AD? Yeah, all that stuff was still in play, including the sacrifices, all of it. But after the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, it ended the old covenant practices and finally put an end to that, just like it says, something that is out of date and is growing old is about to disappear. And that, my friend, is an overlapping period. But now, today, we are not under both covenants. Okay. Let me see where I want to go here uh, now. I'll I, I tell you what I'll do. I'm going to read you uh, just some notes that I made from a conversation. I, I wanted to do a part three to this because I've had some pretty cool conversations on Facebook Messenger with two or three people, and I just want to talk about this. Did you know that uh, the people that think that the Old Covenant is still in place, here's what I wrote on that. It says the Moses Law was for a specific people for a specific time. And Jesus fulfilled the law because no one else could before him. Because Jesus lived by the Spirit, the Spirit of the law, the law of love. See, Jesus didn't live by the letter of the law. Jesus lived by the Spirit of the law, which is love. And he fulfilled that old covenant perfectly because he was coming at it with the right motives and the right emotions, and it wasn't to keep him out of trouble with his father like it was for the folks under the old covenant back then. Okay, but let me go back to my notes of what I wrote. Uh, Jesus lived by the spirit of the law, the spirit of love, love. And God's emotion behind the law, law was to always walk in love toward other people. Before and after Jesus, all other men lived by the letter of the law, which was only a schoolmaster. And I love what the New Testament for everyone says about Galatians 3. He doesn't call it a schoolmaster. He calls it a babysitter. Yeah. Did you know that God had to babysit human beings in the old covenant to keep them from hurting one another? Remember my scenario about the schoolroom and the teachers not in the schoolroom? And they're not just hitting and kicking and spitting it, uh, and pulling each other's hair. They're also tearing the room up. They're just going bonkers until the school teacher comes in and she keeps them underhand, right? Okay. So I like what the New Testament for everyone says. He just calls it a babysitter. And that's what it was. The old covenant was babysitting mankind, keeping them suppressed or, or held under from tearing the all of creation up as well as each other until the one of faith, not us coming to faith, but the one who is faith, Jesus, could come and bring us into a better promise and a better covenant. Okay, so it says here, uh, the rest of my note to this person, it says, uh, before and after Jesus, all other men lived by the letter of the law, which was only a schoolmaster to limit the damage man did because of their hardness of heart toward each other. Jesus didn't have hardness of heart, so the law was not a schoolmaster to him. Jesus had the heart of God, and he perfectly represented the spirit, not the letter, the spirit of the law, by walking in love. Now, Jesus clearly was born under the law, but didn't live under the law. He actually walked in the spirit of the law instead. The scribes and Pharisees always argued with Jesus because they were following the letter of the law. They placed what was written above the emotion and the motivation of God. See, they kept the letter of the law, okay, legalistically without having any love toward each other or other people, okay? So they put the letter of the law as a higher importance than the motive behind the law, which was to provide and protect and to love one another, okay? 
And that was the problem with Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes because they followed the letter of the law, which actually made them violate the law because of their cold hearts toward people. They found ways around the law because their hearts were hardened. And I'm going to give you an example. I wrote this. I said, like healing on the Sabbath. They let the law, the letter of the law, override the spirit of the law, which is love. The letter of the law says leave the person sick and hurting to follow the law on the Sabbath and don't do anything on the Sabbath. But the spirit of the law, which is love, says that love prefers to make them whole as quickly as possible, regardless of the day of the week. Okay? Does that make sense? I just love this conversation that I was ha having with uh, this individual. Here's my last note to, that we wrote together. I said, so man... Uh, could not keep the law. People before Jesus couldn't keep the law, but Jesus comes and fulfills it because he walked in the spirit of the law, which is love, and not by the letter of the law, which brings death and condemnation. But then people who say that we should keep the Old Testament covenant uh, uh, sometimes are called Torah followers. But those folks and people who are kind to, to do both, kind of blend them or whatever, uh, want us to live by the letter again and fail like everyone else did before Christ. There is no way in a human way without the spirit of love living in us, working through us, that we can fulfill. I don't even know that we can fulfill the 613 or the 6,000 laws that it became as they started stacking law on top of law, trying to control, reprobate, cold-hearted people. Did you know, really, if you want to, I'm going to say this real quick, too. Did you know, in a way, you can look at the Moses law? Notice that it didn't say God's law. The Moses law would be what we would consider the law of the land. Like now, we have governing bodies over us, and we have the laws of the land, okay? But did you know God's laws, the laws of Jesus, what Jesus brought are the laws of love. Now, that's where I want to go next. I want to read to you just a couple of things real quick, and then I'm going to uh, call it a wrap-up today. You know, in Matthew 22, 37 through 40, this is where Jesus says that uh, the most important command is to love God. And the second one is like the first, love your neighbor as you love yourself. All of the law and all the writings of the prophets, so the whole Old Testament, depend on and are based upon and hang upon these two commands. Okay, so now when we see in Scripture, this is going to be uh, James chapter 2, verse 8, guys. This is the royal law is found in Scripture. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, which is found in Leviticus 19, 18, and Matthew 22, 37 through uh, 40. If you carry out this law, you are doing what is right. How about that? Now, the royal law is called the royal law because the king, Jesus, decreed it, and also because it is the supreme law. Okay, and here's a, uh, it says here in Galatians 5.14 in the disciples' literal New Testament, for the whole law Talking about the Old Testament, not just the Ten Commandments or the 613. For the entire Old Covenant has been fulfilled in one saying. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. And here, uh, Galatians 6, 2. By helping each other with troubles, bearing each other's burdens, you truly obey and accomplish and you fulfill the law of Christ. Did you notice it doesn't say you fulfill Moses' law? You're not fulfilling and you're not even trying to fulfill the letter of the law, okay, the legalistic part of the law. You're fulfilling the spiritual law, the spirit behind the law, which is Christ, the law of love. I hope I'm bringing this all together for you. I'll say this one more time. When I see an 85-year-old woman walking across a parking lot holding on to her little buggy, see, I'm not trying to keep Moses' law. I'm not trying to keep the old covenant. I am walking in the spirit of the law, which is love, regardless of what day it is, even on the Sabbath, because I love her as I love myself. I'm loving her as Christ told me 
to love her. Well, listen, guys, I love you, and I hope this teaching has blessed you today, and I will see you here tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye.